Kia ora, it's Om here from Craft Lab NZ and welcome to today's tutorial on how to make a ball. So we're going to learn how to make a beautiful flax ball. The first part of this tutorial is actually going to be me showing you how to make it with some paper through different coloured paper and then the second part is actually transferring those skills, same skills, but to being able to make it with flax. So definitely the paper one is a great start because if you do different coloured pieces of paper you really can quite easily see where these patterns link um, and then translate that to flax to make your very own flax.
The other day I got pretty excited and I made a ginormous one out of uh, Supplejack. So once we learn this skill today, you can actually transfer that skill to making it with different materials and different sizes. So what we're going to first start with is we're going to start with six pieces of flax. Now, they're not very long because I'm going to make quite a short little ball. So maybe if I was to give you a gauge, they're probably as long as my arm and they might be about as thick as my finger. And as a beginning, beginning one, that's probably a great size. So we've got six of these pieces. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the back side of a knife and on the dull side, so what you'll notice is you'll notice one side's really dull and the other side's super shiny. So on the dull side, all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my knife and I'm just going to gently pull it like so. Not too tight, just running it over that edge. What that'll do is now you can see it's naturally starting to create a curve, which is what we want. So we're going to do that to all six pieces so they've got this beautiful little curve. Alright, see you So some tools that we're going to need here, you could use pegs, but I prefer to use these little hair clips here. If I grab six of these little bad boys out, so dull side up, I'm going to put one piece down here, this piece is going to go on top. Now what I need to do is do something that I kind of remember by the way that I think it's like train tracks. So. We've got a piece that's going to come over this one, but it's going to go under that neighbour like so. On this side here, holding this, we're going to go under that side and over that side there. So I've kind of got these two little train track things happening here, if you can sort of see that little pattern there. And then to finish this process, on either this end or this end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come under and over then under and over. So I create this really beautiful little design here. And the last thing what I'll hopefully will notice is that if I go round, each of these pieces should be sitting under something. So I can see that these two pieces here are kind of a bit free. So I'll just carry on that pattern by making that like that. And now we've got this beautiful little star pattern just like this. So now if I try and cinch this pattern together really, really tight, Okay, and we've got a beautiful, beautiful little star there. And at that point there, I'm going to use these little paper clips here, or these little hair clips, sorry, to come along. And I'm going to put all of these in place. So they're all held with these little clips. Just like so. Okay, so step one done. Our five pieces there have been woven together. With our next piece like this, our, our sixth piece, I'm just going to make it into quite a big circle, like so. And it doesn't actually matter if a lot of it's sticking out the side there, because we can use that later. But for now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to peg this and hold that. So I've kind of got this little circle starting to get created. Now what I'm going to do is if I have a look on this little pattern here, I should notice that there will be five of them that are stuck under. So the job will be this one stuck under, that one stuck under, that one stuck under, that and that. So all those ones that are under something, if I was to get them and start to bring them up, so one, two, three, four, five. So I've got those five there that I've lifted up. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use that little hook to go over the top of all of them. And I'm going to stretch it so I start to bring all of these pieces pretty close and slide that hook down. So once I've got that little circle there, I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it So once I've slid that little hook down over those five pieces that were sticking under, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and all I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on that pattern. So this one can't be over two. See how it's over one? It needs to now go under the neighbour. So I'd do this. I'd bring them all along, working my way around, and I would put them so that they're all carrying on that pattern of over under. What I'll notice now is I actually won't need these little clips down there anymore. I can actually shift those clips up and now I can hold these little top bits. So I'm just going to work my way around, removing that lower little pin there, and sliding it around. So coming around here, removing the lower peg, putting that one on top. Okay, so I've got my little pin there, and I'm going to put that there. Woo, again there! It's a bit hard work! But it's definitely worth it. Okay, so now that we've gone around, and we've pegged all of these ones, what we'll notice is if we have a little look at this here, 
this, that little ring that I slid down over the top, it actually looks quite big. So I could probably at this point here, start to just get that and I can start to slide it. And if you see, I'm actually just sliding it like this and pulling it tight. So I'm resizing it now. So it's kind of starting to look like a bit, bit of a nicer circle shape. So that's looking good. Even though we've got that massive tail sticking out, we can sort that out later. So the next step is this. What we're gonna notice here is we should have two that are joined, two that are joined, two that are joined, two that are joined. So they're all joined around. All we're gonna do is we're going to miss one of these. So if I'm gonna try and join these two here, I'm gonna completely forget about those two because we actually wanna join the partner on the other side there. So this one and this one actually will end up going together. So the way that that works is because this piece is coming under, all it needs to do is it does need to go over its neighbour and wherever this other one's coming here from, I'm going to get this and I'm going to slide it and this is actually going to get slid down the inside of where that other one was coming from. So I'll quickly do this little process here. So you can see I'm sliding it down the inside like so. Trying to sort of maintain that little circle shape. And then that other piece that needs to join with it also is just going to follow wherever that piece has come from. I could probably remove that little peak now. I'm going to come over and under. So it's just completely tracing where that other piece came from. So now all I'm going to do now is go around and I'll follow this pattern. Because this one's coming under and over, it needs to go over, and then these two are gonna go together. So all I'm doing is working on all of the ones sticking out to the right-hand side for now. And one of those pieces slides on the inside. This other piece is just going to follow where it came from. So at this point, we've, as I start to come across these little pins now, all those hair clips, I can actually remove them. Or if we've got these hanging out, we can just sort that out later. So again, I'm going to come back to this one because that's over, it needs to go under and it's going to find the neighbour, which is the neighbour is this one here. So I'm just carrying on that process. I oh, one going under. Like so. And as I'm doing this, what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to maintain as much of a circle as possible so I don't have to do much work at the end to be able to get it back into shape. That's looking good like that. Which means this piece needs to come under. This is definitely a trial and error. There'll be points where you think you've got it and then it disappears on you. When I first made this, I actually ended up making it out of some of that blue packing, um, that packing strap. So generally it'd be around the outside of boxes. So I'd use that as a, as a training ground. I have seen some of these get made by um, making them from coloured paper, which works really, really awesome. So there's probably definitely easier ways for you to develop the skill rather than going straight to flax. But I definitely find that one of these made out of flax is pretty special and pretty unique. Okay, so once I've done this here, what I'm starting to look at now is I'm starting to look at this overall shape. And there'll be some areas where I feel, hey, that's sticking up a bit. So by having these little tails out here, I can actually start to just make my way around at any of these little tabs that are sticking out. I'm just going to start bringing it around. So I'm going to start to shape this down and get a bit more tension on it. So we can try to create that really beautiful little ball shape. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep, keep getting a little bit more tension on this and finding areas that may, may need a little bit of help.
you need to know is this is definitely a tricky project and when I first learned to make these I probably took it apart about five times before I actually had success so what we're looking for is it it still is that basic pattern of you've got these weaves that go under and then it has to go over you know this one goes over so it has to go under so you're trying to find these little patterns to carry it on just remembering that when we've done that first process of making that beautiful star and then we drop that hoop over the top all we're doing is when we're putting pieces together one of those sides is going to end up coming and sliding under itself like this and then the other side is just going to weave wherever that's come from the other side is just going to fold at the end we may be left with some of these little tabs that are sticking out yes you can just keep weaving them through but once you've actually got that beautiful ball shape and you're really happy with it at that point i'd actually snip these pieces off we could slide them through but we don't actually need it it might start to change that shape so by snipping those little pieces off we've got the most beautiful little ball so i have never seen one of these balls get made before out of flax so i'd love to hear if this is something that you've seen before I saw this as an Indonesian ball, um, a game called Sepak Tura, and I think that's how you might say it, but it's basically a, um, a volleyball game that's played with your feet. So I've just adapted this design to make it with flax. And again, pretty, pretty beautiful little ball, could be a gorgeous lampshade, there's, there's no real end to what you could do with these. Like I said, this is one that I made about two months ago and it is such a cool soccer ball. If you are making something bigger, I definitely suggest that you bind it. So every single one of these little points where it crosses over like here and here, I've actually got lots of little flax ties just to hold it together. And then once you get those skills up, like I said, look at this. This is the ginormous one that I made out of Supplejack. I was super, super excited to make it. It was like arm wrestling to actually make this thing. But once you have those skills, then you can start to apply them through different materials. So I'm pretty excited to be sharing this with you. I definitely know that this is a, a real step up in things that we're making. So from Om at Craft Lab NZ, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Our next tutorial is going to be how to make the most beautiful crowns. So I hope you look forward to that. And I can't wait to see or hear your feedback about have you been able to make the impossible ball. All right, kaki.